Welcome to the body imaging cases. This is a young man with abdominal pain, a loss of weight, and bleeding per rectum. Unenhanced and contrast enhanced CT of the abdomen shows dilatation of the collecting system of the right kidney. And more important than the dilatation for indicating the high pressure inside this kidney is the delayed enhancement of the medulla in relation to that of the left kidney and the increased anteroposterior dimension of the right kidney compared to the left so this is an obstructed right kidney and we start to trace the right ureter down The ureter is still dilated, but we start to see a thickening of the wall of the right side of the colon. On comparison of the unenhanced and the contrast enhanced images we see enhancement of the mucosa of the right side of the colon and we notice that this enhancement is regular and is limited to the mucosa not extending into the adjacent wall thickening we see marked extension of the lesion along the medial aspect of the colon into the retroperitoneum and the right ureter is no longer identified so it seems that this lesion is responsible for the compromise of the right ureter and the obstruction of the right kidney. The red arrow points to a very strongly enhancing structure. The enhancement level is comparable to that of the intravascular enhancement. So this seems to be an aneurysm or a pseudoaneurysm related to the anterior aspect of the lesion. There are multiple aneurysms or pseudoaneurysms. And there is free peritoneal fluid within the pelvic peritoneal recesses. So to sum up, we have a mucosal lesion of the right side of the colon associated with retroperitoneal mass lesion, which has a couple of aneurysms or pseudoaneurysms along its anterior aspect and is obstructing the right ureter causing right hydronephrosis. Possibilities include generally neoplastic and inflammatory diseases of the right side of the colon and retroperitoneum. The aneurysm seen here is probably a mycotic aneurysm and this may suggest fungus infection this needs to be further verified probably by mri endoscopy shows ulceration of the mucosa of the right side of the colon in comparison to the healthy mucosa of the left side of the colon and the normal parts of the mucosa on the right side are elevated by submucosal lesions Biopsies have been taken and MRI has been performed for further characterization of the lesion. And here we see the transverse T2 weighted images. And on our right hand side, we see fused image of the diffusion restriction, the calculated diffusion restriction on the T2 weighted images. We have uh, two striking features. The very low 
signal intensity of the lesion on T2 weighted images and the marked diffusion restriction of the lesion. The lesion is both mucosal and retroperitoneal. Here we have the unenhanced and the gadolinium enhanced T1 weighted fat saturated MRI and we see the terminal ileum pointed to by the arrow. It is involved in the disease process by wall thickening and the lesions along its medial aspect. And we see on the unenhanced image that the lesions are quite bright on this type of image. Not only that, but we see even brighter spots within the lesion on the unenhanced T1 weighted fat saturated MRI. This is the ileocecal valve. And again, on this unenhanced T1 weighted image, we see the high signal intensity spots within the lesion. And on the contrast enhanced image pointed to by the red arrow, we see the aneurysms or the pseudo aneurysms we have just seen on the CT filling with gadolinium contrast agent. And we see on both types of images uh, how long the involvement of the wall of the right side of the colon is. It involves the whole right side of the colon and even the ileocecal region. Inside the lumen of the cecum, we see this very, very bright structure on the fat saturated T1 weighted images. This would provide a very good clue to the diagnosis. We see here how the enhancement of the lesion involves its periphery and leaves very big areas within the lesion unenhanced. And here we have the right hydronephrosis and the impaired excretion of contrast agent by the right kidney. So now after MRI, we can put the observations in a better context together. The assumption of fungus infection is given a higher priority because the lesion is having low signal intensity on T2 weighted images, high signal intensity on fat saturated T1 weighted images and even higher spots there within the lesion. We have a very bright structure within the lumen of the cecum on the T1 weighted images which is presumably a fungus bowl and we have aneurysms within the invasive lesion at the retroperitoneum medial to the ascending colon and these are most probably mycotic aneurysms. We have here a couple of observations which take us away from the assumption of malignancy. First, we see mucosal enhancement, which is very irregular and quite limited to the mucosa with no continuity with the enhancement of the rest of the the lesion at the retroperitoneum and we know that cancer of the colon is in mucosal lesion so this pattern of enhancement is not fitting with that second we have a bicompartmental configuration of the lesion we see the lesion at the colon and then 
like an hourglass configuration, we see another lesion at the retroperitoneum. This is not fitting with colon carcinoma because what we see in colon carcinoma is thickening of the wall of the colon and lymph nodes at this region. And this is clearly not a lymph node enlargement. If we take the other assumption that this is a retroperitoneal malignancy, then uh, we need to have it extending to the region of the colon as one mass not in this hourglass configuration. So what happened here is that fungus infection of the mucosa of the colon has caused the inflammation at the mucosa and then has invaded through the wall of the colon, went to the retroperitoneum, and there in a new focus, it started a new disease process. The third observation which takes us away from malignancy is the long segment of involvement of the colon. Usually, the carcinoma of the colon is short and it causes obstruction as well. In this case, we have very little obstruction. The fourth observation against malignancy is the configuration of the non-enhancing components of the retroperitoneal mass. If this is a retroperitoneal sarcoma, we see the degeneration at the middle of the lesion. Lymphoma usually does not have this non-enhancing components. So the configuration here of the non-enhancing component is fitting more with the fungal abscess more than anything else. So the diagnosis is invasive fungal infection of the colon and the retroperitoneum, that's a diabolomycosis. And if it is difficult to pronounce, then just say basidiopolomycosis. Basetiopolomycosis is a fungus that infects immunocompetent persons and it affects the skin by inoculation or the gastrointestinal tract from ingestion of food contaminated with the fungus. It is rather recently described and the first documented cases were described in Arizona, USA, and Saudi Arabia. Our learning points. Acetyopolomycosis of the colon may occur in non-immunocompromised patients. Infection happens due to ingestion of food contaminated with the fungus. Four features favoring fungal infection in this case and in most of the other described cases in the literature. Low signal intensity of the invasive lesion on T2 weighted images, high signal intensity on T1 weighted images, luminal fungus bowl, and mycotic aneurysms. We have four observations here that disfavor the diagnosis of malignancy, the long segment involvement, the bicompartmental configuration of the lesion, the isolated mucosal enhancement, and the configuration of the non-enhancing component of the retroperitoneal mass.